Booties for Black Girl Nerds. What inspires you to take on kid-friendly projects? Having kids. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I mean, you know, honestly, um, I, I, I started in uh, children's television. Um, and before that, I, you know, was a comic book illustrator, which back in the day was, was, was for kids. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I guess I, 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 probably the easiest answer is that I'm just a big kid myself. Nice, nice. You know, um, and so I, I just think, but then it's, it's continued as I've had my own family. Um, yeah. And I just like that world. I enjoy, you know, family entertainment. How has being a parent informed your work or the types of projects that you take on? Well, I think that, you know, you, you really sort of, you, uh, I'll start with, with, with Despicable Me. I, I, to me, the movie, in a lot of ways, the first one, was about the choices that we all face, career versus family. Yeah. And I always say it's, in some ways, it's about being a bad parent, which I think more parents can maybe identify with than being a perfect parent. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and I had, my kids were very little then. And then with, with pets, you know, we had just, I think right around when the film was made, a year or two before we'd gotten the first kind of pets for the kids because they were a little older, which were guinea pigs. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's again, it's just like it's sort of you find something in your own life that uh, that allows you to have commentary on on the material. And I and I think that's why I've enjoyed making films like Despicable yeah. Me and Pets because they're part of the, the, the of the fabric of what I'm going through. Yeah. You know? A lot of the pets um, have evolved so much from the first movie till now. What was the process like adding layers to their characters, especially Snowball and Max? It's just really rich, really, really, really rich. Well, to your point, I mean, we started talking about like what is going to be uh, fun and interesting and relatable for an audience coming off the first film. And with Max, you know, we quickly started talking about the idea of pets and kids. That Max and Duke, you know, they have the perfect life and then suddenly a baby is introduced. And I've had friends that have gone through that where they have this dog and then they love the dog or the cat and then a baby shows up and the animal's yeah. like, what happened to me? Yeah. And so yeah. like going through that process felt like a fun place for particularly Max because he's so neurotic um, and would initially be very resistant to um, loving this kid. Yeah. Um, and then with Snowball, who was kind of the bad guy in the first one, not really, but a little bit, um, it just felt like, well, let's turn that around and make him a hero, and very literally, and because Snowball is Snowball, and he's a bit maybe deluded, you know, taking this idea that his owner dresses him up as a superhero, and so he takes it to the next step thinking he's a superhero. Yeah. So it's just kind of taking these big ideas and, and running with it as, a, as new territory to explore for these characters. Yes. Which pet do you personally identify with the most, and why? I guess in some ways I'd have to say Norman just because I do the voice, even though he's kind of an idiot. Um, so I probably shouldn't say that. Um, I think in a lot of ways, you know, Max I identify with um, because you know he's he's you know he's nervous about the world. He's scared, like what's going to happen. He's worried about the future, which I think I can get trapped in that. So um, yeah, I, yeah, I guess that you know so there's some there's some common. What's your favorite scene from Pets Two? I always say my favorite scene is the ending, actually, um, because um, I just, I like to think that it sort of delivers on the emotional arc that we set up at the beginning um, and just kind of creates a nice kind of um, emotional resonance, hopefully for the audience, um, as, as the film comes to a conclusion. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.